Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, can coenzyme Q10 supplementation help prevent cognitive decline? And this one I'm gonna leave a little bit more open-ended. I'm gonna talk about a review article on how coenzyme Q10 can or may be beneficial to for the elderly or for uh, middle age in preventing cognitive decline. Um, the reason why I'm doing this in this way is because it is a review article that's just looking at the possible mechanisms and some good studies showing that it can re re reduce um, cognitive decline in different areas. But more specifically, this article is a, um, a preposition or more of a study protocol that should be done, uh, but it has not been done yet, or at least um, the at least the article or the paper discussing the article discussing this uh, protocol has not been approved and done and completed yet so what we'll do is we'll talk about a little bit of what causes aging and con cognition issues um, and then about coenzyme q10 and talk more about through the paper so let's get right to the paper uh, it is from the frontiers in aging neuroscience uh, it's called coenzyme q10 or coq10 for short and Cognition, a review and study protocol for a 90-day randomized controlled trial investigating cognitive effects of ubiquinol. So real quick, coenzyme Q10, um, ubiquinol, and ubiquinone are technically all the same thing. Um, coenzyme Q10, I consider as just the general, um, like this is, this is it, and then ubiquinol and ubiquinone are more specific versions of coenzyme Q10. Um, which I can explain later, but basically ubiquinol is the version that is already reduced, and so it can become oxidized to ubiquinone when um, electrons come uh, on it, okay? Um, and so, let's see here. Um, so, let's, uh, again, it's from 2019 is the... Uh, is the published date. Um, so again, effective treatments for amelioration of cognitive decline, multiple mechanisms uh, related to cognitive decline, including cerebrovascular disease, oxidative stress, reduced antioxidant capacity, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, so established beneficial effects have been seen for mitochondrial dysfunction, vascular function, and oxidative stress to improve healthy brain function in elderly population. Um, so let's just get right to the introduction. Okay, so talk about oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, and aging. Well, a key feature of cognitive aging process is the body's increased vulnerability to damage from free radicals. So free radicals are basically these free electrons, right? And every atom has electrons that are circling it, and electrons should always be in pairs. And if they're not in pairs, then or if bonds break, causing them to not be in pairs, that can cause damage to other cells, other molecules within cells, around cells, and that damage leads to um, decreased efficiency of cells, um, whether that's making energy, whether that's um, causing inflammation and scar tissue, it's many, many different things. Um, and so with the increased proliferation of free radicals, within old age coincides with also the reduction in antioxidant stores. So we'll talk about how coenzyme Q10 is an antioxidant. Um, so back up here, we have 95 to 98% of all reactive oxygen species being produced are as a result of mitochondrial electron transport chain. So the mitochondrial electron transport chain um, during aerobic metabolism is in the mitochondria, right? The mitochondria helps to make ATP or cellular energy. And if the mitochondrial electrotransport chain is doesn't have enough antioxidant stores, well then there's going to be a lot of reactive oxygen species that are going more free radical, more awry, and they're not being controlled, okay? Uh, these are just different types here. Okay, so one some examples are like ascorbic acid or vitamin C as an antioxidant. Glutathione um, can reduce damaging effects of oxidants. Um, 
Okay, so this is a good part. High levels of prooxidants, such as polyunsaturated fatty acids, transition metals, um, so like heavy metals, and a high metabolic rate make the brain particularly sensitive to oxidative stress. So um, a high metabolic rate, meaning the brain is constantly working, you're constantly using oxygen for energy, is going to make it more sensitive to oxidative stress. Uh, it has more polyunsaturated fatty acids, like omega-3s fatty acids, right? Um, in the brain, prooxidants are relatively abundant compared to levels of antioxidants, such as glutathione, this catalase enzyme, uh, further exacerbating the, uh, the brain's vulnerability to this oxidative damage. Okay, so um, there has been associations uh, between oxidative damage and biological compounds and cognitive performance, like positive associations between an using antioxidants and measures of working memory. Um, there's also been the same thing with memory being the cognitive function um, most affected by oxidative stress. Um, neurodegenerative disease such as Alzheimer's also have been seen uh, to have oxidative stress markers higher in those subjects versus control subjects. Okay, if we look at coenzyme Q10, coenzyme Q10 Right, it's just this ring, okay? Um, it's synthesized in our body, okay? But I'm gonna show you later that what can affect it, but it's synthesized in our body in all organs. Uh, it's most densely concentrated in organs with the highest energy requirements, like the brain, the heart, and the liver tissue, okay? Um, it basically sits in the electron transport chain. It accepts electrons from complexes one, two, at one and two on its way to complex three, okay? So let's take a look at that. So right here, here is a mitochondria, and that mitochondria has on the inner membrane this electron transport chain. You have complexes one, two, three, four, and this ATP synthase, which is what makes ATP. And as energy, as electrons transfer through these, they are basically making um, or creating or pushing um, a hydrogen, pushing these four h pos, these hydrogen atoms across the gradient so they can flow nice and easily smooth through the gradient to make ATP. And so set of, or coenzyme Q10 is right here, sitting right between complex one and three and between two and three. And when we basically um, degrade our sugars or fats and ketone bodies, we make these products called NADH and FADH2 that are going to donate or give or shuttle electrons through this area. And coenzyme Q10, if it's not there working well, then it's not going to be able to shuttle electrons through this area very well and you get free radical production. You get these electrons that go awry and cause damage, okay? So, there it is. That's the importance of it. Uh, we might come back to this. Basically, this article just shows how coenzyme Q10 can decrease lipid peroxidation, basically, again, causing damage to lipids. Um, it also uses ascorbate or vitamin C and vitamin E to help bring it back into balance because when it accepts electrons, it also accepts hydrogen, and then it has to come back to the uh, coenzyme Q10 or ubiquinol version. Um, it can help regulate um, or decrease cytokine that are increased after an infection, many things like that. So if we come back here, now again, it prevents damage caused from free radicals, including oxidation of lipids within the mitochondrial membrane. That's what I just showed you. Um, so CoQ10 is a potential treatment for cognitive decline. Again, mitochondrial metabolism is the primary source of reactive oxygen species. Um, it was found that lipid peroxidation um, can increase in older rats compared to young rats, while giving antioxidants can help save these rats, whether it's uh, alpha lipoic acid, acetyl carnitine. Okay, again, these are animal studies, but uh, there are obviously cardiovascular benefits for coenzyme Q10, but here, if we go to the effects of CoQ10 on brain function and cognition, due to the role of coenzyme Q10 in the mitochondria, there is a therapeutic potential for this CoQ10 or ubiquinol administration in these disorders. Um, 
So some researchers found in progressive supranuclear palsy, which is a neurodegenerative disorder, significant cognitive improvement on frontal lobe assessment compared to the placebo group suggests that CoQ10 uh, may have led to restoration of previously lost functions in, in those neurons. Um, same thing with a trial of 100 milligrams three times a day with creatine administered to 75 Parkinson's patients with mild cognitive decline uh, over 18 months had higher Montreal cognitive assessment scores, basically scored better with the CoQ10 and creatine. Um, there is um, another one here with uh, an acute dosage of 100 milligrams of CoQ10, uh, basically improved EEG scores in hypertensive patients. There is one uh, case study of a Nigerian woman with uh, dyslipidemia, who had been experiencing statin-induced memory dysfunction. So we're going to talk real quick about statins. Um, statins block the production of coenzyme Q10. So after having some memory dysfunction that was possibly due to the statins, um, taking four months daily of 100 milligrams per day of supplementation um, helped to resolve those memory complaints. Again, this was just a one-person study or one-person uh, complaint. Um, so again, basically substances with the capability of modifying endothelial function, that is vascular function, such as coenzyme Q10 may in turn be associated with increased blood flow to the brain, enhancing delivery of oxygen and glucose to the brain, therefore making ATP and energy. Um, so that is that. So let's go back to this one here. So again, this is just showing that if you are on a statin, you should consider taking coenzyme Q10. Statins are meant to decrease our endogenous, our own production of cholesterol. And so right here, acetyl-CoA is what is the main breakdown product of glucose, um, like sugar or fats. And then that goes through some different enzymes and then through HMG-CoA reductase to mevalinate and then down this pathway all the way to cholesterol. That's how we make cholesterol. Statins block this pathway. So basically statins block the acetyl acetyl CoA to mevalinate. And what then happens is when we don't make cholesterol. Well at the same time if statins are blocking this, we also don't come this way to make coenzyme Q10. And so even though every cell in our body makes coenzyme Q10, we're not going to be able to make it while on a statin that's preventing cholesterol. And so that's where it might be beneficial to eat cholesterol or to supplement with cholesterol. Things that are going to have cholesterol in it are um, animal foods. All animal foods are going to have uh, coenzyme Q10. All animal foods are going to have coenzyme Q10, uh, especially like heart, beef heart, lamb heart, because it's highly concentrated in the hearts of these animals. And so, again, coenzyme Q10 can be eaten, but you can also take it as a supplement as ubiquinol. And that can help to improve oxidative stress, um, especially when someone is on a statin. Okay. So uh, in conclusion, basically coenzyme Q10 is a vital antioxidant in the mitochondria of our cells, which are important because mitochondria not only produce energy, but they produce a lot of free radicals that need to be quenched by antioxidants, one of them being coenzyme Q10, which is vital in that electron transport chain. And so if we're taking a statin that prevents production of that, or if we're just aging and uh, not recycling coenzyme Q10 or making more free radicals, or mitochondria aren't as efficient, then supplementing with coenzyme Q10 or eating uh, beef heart, lamb heart, uh, the hearts of animals can help to supply coenzyme Q10 to our body, decrease free radical production, and therefore improve cognition. Um, and so this is something that I think everyone should be aware of because um, it's pretty easy to supplement with if you feel like you are having some cognitive decline. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.